Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us on another adventure. And today's video is gonna be very simplistic, but very fun. It's gonna be my top six gear items that I love. And the, the emphasis is on love because this video was originally meant to be a Valentine's Day video. Sadly, we didn't get around to filming and publishing it before then, but better late than never, right? So once again, it's gear that I love. It's gear that I cannot see myself picturing it uh, being replaced, being sold, being traded, and none of that stuff. It's gear that is just a mainstay for my arsenal, for my loadout, and I just absolutely love it. So once again, a very simplistic video, very fun video. I hope you enjoy it. And at the end of this, I will make it a tag video so we can get a couple of other channels going with that as well. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. So let's begin, it's gonna be six items, and let's begin with the first one, which is gonna be my favorite haversack of all time. Now, I've been doing the outdoor thing going on 10 years, and I've used a lot of haversacks, and it's a hotly contested topic, because I do gotta say, I have several that I absolutely love. And, you know, some people are gonna scoff. I know there's a lot of viewers that are gonna, you know, call it a purse or a man bag or whatever. To me, that's just insecurity on their part. When you think of, you know, in the history of our, of our species, the baddest mofos that ever lived were walking around with the bag. From Atsi the Iceman, Vikings, Western Outlaws, soldiers in World War I, World War II. So that doesn't phase me. Once again, I think, you know, a haversack is just a necessity and it's just, you know, it's just the bushcrafter's companion. Whether you're out on a scout, you're out on a hunt, a fishing trip, something like that, this thing is just going to be very useful. And it's very difficult because I have a ton of great haversacks throughout the years, but if I have to choose one, it's going to be this one, the Tough Possum Gear Shackleton EDC Satchel. I love this thing. Uh, once again, it's, it's a very tough category because I have a lot of great haversacks but the one that i find myself reaching for the most is this one this is not a full review on this haversack if you want to see the full review video i'll have the link up here in the corner but yeah great haversack american made american company and what i love the most i think what really wins me over the most are these little side pockets i like the fact that i don't even have to open the bag to access an item so over here i have my folding saw so if i'm on my way, I'm trekking through the woods or through the desert and I'm finding, you know, good firewood right away. I got access to this. Also on this side, of course, I have a flashlight. So I'm out camping in the middle of the night. You know, I hear something rummaging through my campsite or I just got to wake up and go pee. You know, something like that right away through the darkness. I could just reach out here and grab this. I know it's going to be guaranteed there. Of course, you can remove this and add whatever you want. You can add a multi-tool there. You can add a fixed blade, whatever the case may be. It's up to you. But for me, my flashlight must go in here. Also, the buckle is great. Now, it did take me some time to warm up to this. Uh, I forgot what it's called. This buckle, a cobra buckle, I believe. And it's a little bit futuristic, a little contemporary for my taste. I'm more old school. But I do like the fact that it's extremely quiet and extremely durable. And I like that, especially when you're out hunting or something. You don't want to make loud noises or you don't want Velcro, stuff like that. So I really like this. And the bag itself, it, it's big enough to carry the essentials without being too large or too small. Just that perfect Goldilocks zone of a haversack. So once again, this is not a review on the bag, just showing why I love this so much. And Tough Possum Gear is an American company once again, so really great stuff. So yeah, my favorite haversack right here. As for my next item, this may be a little bit more niche or more particular to me, so it may not be, you know, necessary for everybody, but I'm gonna talk about my favorite hat of all time, which is this one right here. Now, I have a good collection of hats. You know, I have a straw hat for the summer months. If, say, I'm out fishing and stuff, it's very breathable, very flexible, that kind of stuff. And then I have a wool hat that's thicker, you know, for the winter conditions when it's snowing and, you know, really cold nights. This one's right in the middle of the road. It is 100% cotton. Now this is my Brixton Thorpe 2 hat. Sadly, this hat is no longer made. It is no longer available. So this is the last that I have. I should have, had I known that they would have discontinued it, I would have bought several. But as you can tell, I've been rocking this bad boy since 2019. So it's going on four years already. And I mean, you could see, you know, just the, the weathering on this hat, just the sweat stains and all the wear and tear of it. And it's still holding on great. And of course, you know, me coming from the Boba Fett school of fashion, I like something that has, you know, scuffs and scratches as long as they come naturally. If you distress your items on purpose, to me, that's, you know, some poser, poser stuff. So uh, I like this. Just 
years worth of adventures and traveling. Love this. Once again, this may be more of a regional thing, you know, being out here in the American Southwest, it gets extremely hot. And so this brim is going to protect me from that sunlight. It's going to protect my face and my neck from getting sunburnt. It protects from glare when I'm out, say, hunting in more early morning, stuff like that. And of course, it's going to protect you from the cold nights, the rain and the wind, that kind of stuff, help keep retain your body heat. So a good hat is a must have, in my opinion, and you cannot beat a good old fashioned wide rim hat. Now you can make an argument that a hat is not necessarily an EDC item. I would disagree because it's literally everyday carry. It's carried on my head. And of course I've added uh, EDC flashlight here, the Aurora A1 from Rovivon. It, it can go up to 650 lumens. You've seen me use it if I need to use my hands. For example, last time that I was camping and I'm carrying the cooler to my truck. So, you know, it's a heavy cooler. I need both arms, but this is illuminating the way. So a great little light. So a form of illumination right there. And then, of course, I have a Yuko match for emergencies. I mainly added it in term, you know, as a form of aesthetics and it just looks cool. Uh, the, the pop of color, the orange. But once again, it's a stormproof match. So in a really bad situation, I need to really get the fire going. I got this guy and of course I got the striker in the back. I'm not going to pull it out, but you can see it there. And then I don't know if you can see right here. It's very subtle, but I've actually written the states that I've gone on adventures with this hat. So Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Washington, Oregon, California, Colorado. And if things go according to plan this year, we'll be adding Utah in there as well and Louisiana. So love this hat. Once again, sadly, no longer available, so it makes me cherish it just a little bit more. Item number three is gonna be my favorite multi-tool, and this one is extremely difficult because I have two different ones from two completely separate designs, but we'll start with the more traditional concept of a multi-tool. So most of you watching, when you think of a multi-tool, you're gonna think of something with pliers, like a good old-fashioned Leatherman, stuff like that. So my favorite multi-tool these last couple years has become the Leatherman Blast. Now, sadly, just like the hat, the Leatherman Blast is no longer available. It is discontinued. I don't know what Leatherman was thinking there, but you can still find these secondhand on eBay or something like that on a Facebook group. Really great, really solid little multi-tool. And just like the hat, just like the haversack, this one is in that Goldilocks zone. It's not too small where it's going to not have enough tools or those tools are going to be really small. Or, and it's not too overly large where it's too cumbersome and heavy. Uh, and it's going to have tools you don't even use. So this one's right in the middle. That's what I love about it. Very lightweight. And, you know, it has locking tools. So let's open this up. And one of the things I love the most are the pliers. Now, these are very thin pliers. They're not overly robust. I don't need something that's, you know, bulletproof. I like something that's a little thinner because I use this a lot when I'm out fishing. Uh, I, I use it to remove the, the fish from, I'm sorry, the hook from the fish. So I like that it's a little thinner. It gets the job done just great. And once again, for being someone of, you know, that's an outdoorsman that I'm doing a lot of camping and hunting and, you know, all that stuff, it has a lot of the tools that I like without having something that's just pointless. So I got a little locking blade. Nothing to write home about, but, you know, it never hurts to have a backup blade right here, a little backup knife. Once again, it does lock, so you don't have to worry about this closing on you. It also comes with a saw. A saw, once again, is a must-have when you're outdoors, particularly if you're into bushcraft skills. You know, you're trying to carve notches to make a figure four deadfall or, you know, make a bow drill set, something along those lines. Plus, it has a flat 90-degree spine for striking a ferro rod. And it, once again, it is locking, so you don't have to worry about striking the ferro rod and it's going to close on you. So I like that. And then just the, the basics of everyday carry in the city. You got yourself a little flathead screwdriver. Now, sadly, as you can tell with mine, I do have some rust growing on my multi-tool. So I do got to clean this up and take care of it a little bit better because I guess I'm, I've been neglecting it a lot. So as I said earlier, I do use it for fishing a lot, and I guess I forget to clean it up afterwards. A bottle opener slash can opener. That's a necessity, not only when you're out, you know, camping, but say in a, an emergency scenario, a natural disaster, something like that. You know, a multi-tool is going to be one of the most important items that you're going to be, you know, carrying with you. So you definitely want something that's going to have a can opener. And then, of course, a Phillips screwdriver. And a little pair of scissors. You, you would be surprised how 
handy these come not only for using you know when out in the field but if you gotta you know trim some nose hairs or something like that uh they do come in handy for you know stuff like that so once again the Leatherman Blast is my absolute favorite multi-tool when we're talking about a plier-based tool. I've been using this for years, and honestly, I'm going to keep using it. Just note to self, take care of it a little bit more because it is starting to show a lot of rusting around it. So now for item number four, and once again, we're sticking with the subject of multi-tools because it was very difficult to choose between one, so I ended up choosing two of them. Uh, but they're different enough where they can be in a different category. And this is my all-time favorite multi-tool. If I have to choose between this one and the Leatherman, this is the clear winner. This is the One-Handed Trekker by Swiss Army Knives by Victorinox. I've had this guy going on nine years, and I absolutely love it. Obviously, I have a lot of a ton of sentimental value with it because this was my, one of my first knives of all time and i've just been with countless adventures with it but i just love the design the layout even the way it looks i think it's just an awesome little knife so first things first open up the blade we got ourselves a little utility knife but once again it's the one-handed trekker you're able to open it and close it one-handed now some people may not like the fact that it does have some serrations and it is a chisel grind personally i don't mind it because once again this is a utility knife it's cutting through cardboard and plastic that kind of stuff opening packages i'm not going to be using this to skin a rabbit or fillet a fish that's what my belt knife is for so i don't need something that's you know an absolute thin edge this is going to work just fine easy to sharpen now this also has a saw as i mentioned earlier a saw is an absolute must-have if you're an outdoorsman and you know not only is this going to help you gather firewood you know but at the same time you know carve notches and uh, stuff like that this one does also have a 90 degree spine now i do got to say that this one is non-locking that's where the leatherman does take the advantage because this one has closed on my fingers before and it has cut me so one thing i've learned recently is there's a hack where you can use this place this on the ground and then strike it this way and it works just fine so it's all about just you know ingenuity and being resourceful so i don't recall which viewer told me to do that and i tried it and it works great so a little hack right there and then all these tools are just tools that are absolutely necessities for me without having anything that's pointless that i never use once again i love this thing i've had it for years and it just i use this a lot more than i use my other multi-tools i personally don't use a pair of pliers all that much so something like this is a little bit more streamlined for what i like to use and it's just a classic i mean i absolutely love this tool so much i don't have a, an exact review on this exact model though we have reviewed the classic trekker which is everything's exactly the same except the blade is just the more traditional spear point type of knife from swiss army knife so i'll have the link up here if you want to check that out both of them are outstanding little multi-tools highly recommend them so now for illumination let's talk about favorite flashlight of all time and that's easily going to go to my Thrunite T1 flashlight. Now flashlights and flashlight companies are extremely competitive and they're constantly just upping the ante and you know making new models and newer models so in a way this thing is something of a dinosaur. I've had this since 2019, it's 2023 now and even though I've tested several models that are newer, more expensive, nicer, shinier, there's something about this one that cannot be replaced and i still find myself reaching for this one more than any other flashlight so one thing that i like of course is that it's small it's you know it fits in your jeans easily you know it's not going to be too cumbersome too heavy at the same time it does pack a punch it's not too small where it's just going to have weak illumination it's gonna i believe a thousand five hundred lumens on turbo mode that's pretty good for this size it is usb rechargeable this is not a review, of course, especially because it is daytime, so you're not going to be able to see it in action as good as, you know, as I wish you could. So I'll have the link over here in the corner if you want to check out our official review. But it's a great light. The magnetic tail cap is really great. I do love this, especially like if you're working on your vehicle late at night. You can put this, pop this under your hood or, you know, on the side of a door and it'll hold and it'll illuminate while you're changing the tire or, you know, checking the oil or whatever the case may be. Also, uh, there's something that I love a lot about this is the fact that it has this infinity high and infinity low setting. So it allows you to just place it exactly where you like it. You know, if you like it a little lower, a little higher, then of course you turn it off and when you turn it back on, it remembers where you left off. So I really dig that. Once again, it's daytime, so you can't really see it in action here, but see if you can see it in this haversack. So you turn it on, 
and you hold it down and it's gonna dim and it dims all the way down here once it does that little blink that's as low as it goes I mean extremely low extremely subtle hold it down and it's gonna rise to right there obviously once again it doesn't look that impressive in broad daylight but in the darkness it's pretty good and in case you really need to go a little higher than that you can turn it off turn it back on to turbo mode and it's 1500 lumens once again an outstanding light as you can tell years of adventures wear and tear just got that boba fett appeal that aesthetic of the scratches and the scuffing and it's still going strong to this day love this thing okay and now for my sixth and final favorite gear item i mean this is my absolute favorite fixed blade of all time in my 10 years of being outdoors uh hundreds of knives that we bought tested uh sent for review borrowed all that stuff my number one fixed blade of all time to no one's surprise is going to be the wood steel knives snake eater now in case this is the first video that you're watching from our channel and you didn't know this is actually my personal knife design so of course there's going to be some bias there there's going to be some sentimentality there however i can be honest with myself and in the two years i've been using this knife you know by now i would have found some kind of flaw some kind of shortcoming that didn't quite work the way i wished it worked but i gotta say this thing is just absolutely perfect for me what i like doing outside and where i live now that may not be for you this may not be perfect for you in fact it may, it may be completely off i'm not saying it's a perfect knife for everyone but it is for me so i personally love doing a lot of hunting and fishing a lot of catch and cooks so i really wanted a knife that was just more of a scalpel than it was you know an axe you know so i wanted a very thin 330 seconds inch, inch thin blade black grind down here so it's going to be doing a lot of skinning a lot of filleting that kind of stuff and we've done it in the last couple of years between this knife and my original one that i lost i mean we've butchered a wild boar rattlesnake rabbit catfish bluegill crabs all kinds of stuff and it worked exceptionally well uh, not only that but then down here there's is the scanning grind portion it is a multi-grind so that's going to work well for Batoning, feather sticking, carving notches to make, say, figure four deadfall traps, stuff like that. There is a pommel down here for crushing as well. So in case you're crushing something like pecans or shellfish, like once again, like I said earlier, crabs, I use this to break the shells open, break the claws open. So it's just going to be well for living off the land if that's your thing. Once again, if now if I was living in Siberia or something like that, perhaps I would like something that's a lot tougher a lot thicker and heavier but i'm not so i live in down here in the desert there's no hickory there's no oak i don't need any of that so this works exceptionally well nice and thin 90 degree spine i mean i absolutely love this thing I, and i not only that but i find the aesthetics very beautiful as well i just think it's a it's a very elegant knife very thin and elegant it's like the cheetah of bushcraft knives if you're looking for a full full review on this thing i'll have the link up here at the very top so you can see when we tested it out cooked up a rattlesnake i mean it is called a snake eater after all and once again i mean this thing is just outstanding i just love this thing it is just just perfection in hand honestly so yeah my favorite knife of all time is the wood steel knives snake eater knife so that's about it for me, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very fun to make. It's very fun to talk about gear, and especially what your favorite type of gear is. Now, keep in mind, this is just my opinion. So if you agree, disagree, let me know down below in the comments. Also, let me know what are your favorite types of gear. What, what are your favorite knives? What are your, what's your favorite multi-tool, favorite haversack, flashlight? That's kind of cool. That'll be a cool conversation down below. Once again, their opinions. So nobody's right or wrong. It's all about preferences. So keep that in mind. And very fun video. Once again, very fun and simple to make while we kind of ease back into filming, guys. That wasn't a little bit of a funk, and we've also had just very erratic weather. But we're trying to come back, and hopefully we'll have a new video next week. In fact, we're out here killing two birds with one stone. We're filming this video. At the same time, we're scouting this area for particular plants to make videos for foraging pretty soon. So keep your eye out for that and that's about it for me folks once again i hope you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up if you did comment down below let's get a conversation going and i did say earlier that we are going to be tagging a couple of other youtube channels so we can see what their favorite gear is 
You don't have to follow my criteria. If you don't use haversacks, you can talk about your favorite backpack. If you don't wear cowboy hats, you can talk, talk about your favorite beanie. I would just like to see what's your favorite gear and why. I just think that's pretty fascinating. So we're going to be tagging three YouTube channels. First one's going to be Erica from Not Your Average EDC. Be sure to check her out. She is awesome. Second's going to be Dana from Mountain Sport Air Guns. He's a really awesome, a good buddy of mine. And lastly, of course, my buddy Red from Irish Zombie Nation. So you guys are tagged if you're watching this. It's optional if you want to do so. Or even if you didn't get tagged and you would like to make a response, by all means, make it and be sure to let me know. Tag me on it. So that's about it for me, folks. We will see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.